Hey, good people, how y'all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am under the weather, so I do apologize for my voice, but I wanted to make sure that I got this review up and done for you guys. Today, I'm gonna be giving you all my review on The Real Housewives of Potomac. Y'all bear with me. This is season seven episode four let's go i don't know about you guys but i feel like the storylines this season are so bizarre to me like what's going on potomac what is going on you have giselle accusing chris of what exactly i'm still confused about you're upset because he asked you to go to your room and there was nobody there because you thought somebody was going to be there like girl what mia do you have cancer do you not have cancer are you trying to get attention what's up with that then you have Ashley over here. She doesn't know if she wants to get a divorce or not. She and her husband are still living together. They plan to continue to live together after the divorce, it appears. I don't really know. There's no clarity regarding that. Robin wants a prenup all of a sudden, but Juan says that he makes more money than her, so he doesn't really care. Like, what is going on? Anywho, guys, that's just what I was feeling as I was watching this episode and I was thinking about things. I was, you know, I was just like, it's just not making sense to me. I'm not going to be giving you all a play by play. I'm just going to let you guys know what I feel about each of these people and what they brought to this particular episode. I love to see Robin and Juan with their boys. I think that they have a beautiful family and I love to see it. I thought it was hilarious when I believe their older son, Corey, said that his father is a world class bench player. I almost fell off the couch that was funny to me as far as this whole family and friends thing that Robin tried to plan what did Robin actually plan y'all help me figure out what hand she had other than gathering the people there Giselle was the one who kind of took over everything Wendy trying to start this whole restaurant business girl I get it you are very ambitious you did not grow up here in the United States your family especially your mother really pushed you to excel and be a doctor and be all of these great things. And I feel like Wendy really just wants to make sure she's never poor. You know, like that's what I feel like she is doing. Her husband asked her, at what cost are you willing to continue with this restaurant idea? Because you're already taken from here, taken from there. You don't have all of your other stuff ironed out. What's going on? And I have to agree with him, Wendy. Focus on one brand at a time. Opportunity is always going to come to you, okay? It's not going to stop. And if it stops, you're the type of person that's going to go out and get it. So that's not even a concern. The concern is just dealing with the stuff that you already have on your plate. You guys remember when the season first started? She was like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Girl, that's exhausting. That's a lot. Relax. You have arrived. You have made it, okay? Chill out a little bit. Chris and Giselle. Giselle, if you felt a certain type of way, why did you not address this with Candace regarding Chris making her feel uncomfortable? Like, girl, what? Once again, I just feel like Giselle is looking for a storyline. She could have brought this up during the next segment that they had of that reunion because apparently that's where this whole thing went down. Now, she supposedly shared with Robin on their way home that she felt uncomfortable with Chris. So in the same way that she shared that with Robin, she should have shared it with Candace, period. You decide to wait for the new season to bring this whole thing up just for your storyline, and it's not cool. And the fact that you don't understand why Candace is not messing with you is crazy to me. Like, if you accuse my husband of something that I know he did not do or try to insinuate that he made you feel a certain type of way where there was nothing that he did or said to make you uncomfortable, it's crazy to me. It's not like... Chris went to your room with you knowing that your people weren't there. He did not know, just like you say you did not know. Why doesn't he get that benefit of the doubt? I also think it's funny that as Wendy shares this with her husband and Robin shares this with Juan, both of the guys are like, well, did he say or do anything? And how come Giselle didn't bring it up to Candace? You know, like, that's how they feel. It's obvious. Those are, if this is how you felt, this is how a rational person would have handled the situation. For me, Giselle feeling uncomfortable is on her. Chris does not owe her any apology at all because he did not do anything wrong. Let's just be clear about Sharice being bad. She is just there to solely mess with Karen. And listen, Sharice, she, she had her time on the show and her time has come to an end. I don't know why they bring her back periodically. Other than for her to mess with Karen, but I just feel like, girl, why are you here? What purpose are you serving? Because nobody really cares about what Karen might have done 10, 15 years ago. You know what I'm saying? If you have some new tea, 
maybe that would interest us, but I think you still have to cre- to question the source because we know Sharice has it out for Karen. And while we're on that whole topic, Giselle, every chance she gets making it seem like Karen is running from Sharice or Karen doesn't want to deal with Sharice, it's like, Giselle, why are you so obsessed with Karen? Why are you so obsessed with this woman? She's not looking for you. She's not checking for you. Leave her alone. Dang. Robin trying to get Candace, who we have never seen with Wendy's kids one-on-one before, to take these kids to her family and fun day is crazy to me. First of all, I am a mom. If you made it clear that I'm not welcome at your event, then my family is a package deal. If I'm not welcomed, they're not welcomed. And in what world do you think I would be okay with having my kids go to one of your events without me? Number one, you don't like me. That's the biggest thing. So how do I know you're not going to mistreat my kids? I'm, I'm not saying that Robin would, but as their mom, I don't know that. They're with somebody who does not like me. So no, I would never send my kids to an event that A, I was not invited to, and B, I was not invited to because this person doesn't like me. Absolutely not. Not to mention the fact that Robin knows good and well she would not do that herself. I'm so glad that Karen was the voice of wisdom telling Robin straight up she was wrong. Giselle tried to say, well, you weren't there. When Wendy and Robin got into it, Karen didn't have to be there to know that what Robin did was wrong. You don't single someone out, okay? It's your prerogative not to have Wendy at your event, but you could have called each of those ladies after Ashley's dance class and invited them to your event. You did not have to do that in front of Wendy. And as Robin said in her confessional, I was petty, I was whatever. Yes, girl, that was you are. Okay, let's change those words. You are petty. Even Wendy had Robin and Giselle come to her house last year with the rest of the couples. Okay, so if she could put things aside, certainly you can do the same. It's not that serious. For me, Ashley comes across as not believable. I really don't know what is going on with her and Michael, but she needs to make her story make a little bit more sense because it's hard for me to follow. I'm starting to think that Michael was the one who wanted to call it quits, obviously because one of the reasons being Ashley was no longer willing to partake in inviting other people into their relationship and for whatever other reasons. Ashley mentioned to Mia that Michael is not even trying to fight for their relationship. So that does not sound like a person to me that still wants to be with you. I mean, heck, when they was married, he still wanted other women. So it's like, make it make sense. Something is just not adding up. Ashley says that Mike got a visectomy and she feels sad about it because she knows that they will no longer be able to have children together. I'm sitting here listening to her and I'm like, girl, you're getting a divorce from this man. Why would you want to have more children by him? And I totally am with Mia. He probably got it done because he doesn't want to mess around and get anyone else pregnant. That's just what it is, okay? Michael right now, now that he's clearing house with Ashley, is about to live his best life. Also, when Ashley's talking about Michael feeling like she's trying to get another baby out of him, wouldn't they have to be doing the do for that to happen? So Ashley, you said that y'all weren't doing anything before. Was that a lie? You guys drop a comment and let me know what you think about that. Do you guys also feel as if someone in the group is responsible for leaking Ashley and Michael's divorce? I find it very interesting that after Robin's event, that news broke. Why she decided to share that information, I don't know. But by doing so, obviously you took a chance and now your business is out there. For me, Karen does not seem to want to be bothered with this group of women at the moment. We know she don't mess with Sharice. She and Candace seem like they're still on the outs with each other. They're cordial, but they're nowhere near where they used to be. Her and Giselle are just kind of getting back to being okay and being fine with being in each other in each other's spaces. She and Robin, in my opinion, have never really had any type of meaningful relationship. And Wendy is not ra- around long enough for us to be able to see a dialogue between her and Karen. Then you throw Mia into the mix. And although Karen was the one responsible for bringing Mia to the show, Mia and Karen really, for me, they don't really mix well. You guys let me know what you feel about that. I always felt like their relationship was kind of odd. I know Mia is a fun girl and maybe Karen feels, you know, a lot younger being around her. I don't know, but I just don't feel like those two mesh well. So Karen is kind of like on an island by herself. And you could tell she just is not feeling this group of women, especially when you have people like Giselle and Robin trying to make it seem like 
Karen doesn't want to be around Sharice. Now, I do believe Karen does not want to be around Sharice, but Karen ain't running from nobody. Okay, these women have tried since season one to get to have a moment with Karen, and each time it, for me, has fallen flat. So she is not worried about none of these people. I did find it funny that when she came to the event, she was like, you know, my allergies. And then when she was leaving with G, she's like, Oh, I have an upper respiratory infection, Karen. <laughs> Girl, just say you don't want to be around these people and keep it moving. I felt like Mia was doing the absolute most in her confessionals from saying that G was the community husband. That took me out. Not the community husband. <laughs> Because, you know, like outside of Ray and Dr. Wendy's husband and Chris, who we know he's not coming around. OK, if I'm Chris, I'm staring clear in this group of women. We saw the last episode how he was with Robin, where he was apprehensive to give her a hug or whatever. Chris don't know what to do with himself. And I feel for him because it's like if I say hello or if I give you a hug, are you going to misinterpret that to be something else? So I get why he would not be around. But outside of those two guys and G, ain't nobody else married. And G is the only one who comes to these type of events. So I thought Mia saying that was absolutely funny. To her saying that Michael doesn't want any illegitimate children and calling Robin regular, Mia was doing a lot in, the, in those confessionals. She was definitely firing from every cylinder. Her friend Jacqueline is very interesting as well. You guys let me know what you feel about Jacqueline. Apparently, she and her husband are getting a divorce, and she refers to him as a PP. <laughs> Girl, did you think that name through? A PP, which stands for parenting partner. She also mentions the fact that her husband wanted to invite other people into their relationship as well and she wasn't down for it. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why they're getting a divorce too. I don't understand people who do stuff like that because I feel like once you introduce people into your relationship, when you're ready to move past that phase, either you or your husband or you or your partner, one of you guys are not willing to let it go. And clearly that's the case with Ashley and Michael. So Mia's friend is still trying to figure out her sexuality. It's going to be interesting to see how she navigates through these group of women. I absolutely love seeing Candace wearing her natural hair. I do applaud Candace for speaking to Giselle's daughter, Grace. By the way, did y'all see Grace and Giselle on the way to the event? Why was Grace all hemmed up against the door like she didn't want to sit too close to her mother? Now, I know Giselle's a good mom and everything, but I feel like maybe Grace is a little uncomfortable with cameras and stuff like that being in her face. It just seemed like she was completely uncomfortable during that car ride to me. But getting back to what I was talking about, seeing Candace at least speak to Grace, no acknowledgement to Giselle, which is exactly what Giselle deserves because you're coming for her husband and the way that you went about it is completely wrong. So I wouldn't have two words to put together for you either. The fact that Giselle doesn't understand that is laughable to me. Candace at the end does tell Ashley that she's kind of given up IVF for right now because it did not take the first time. And you know, my, my thing for Candace girl, don't be a quitter. Okay. I know that you're under a lot of stress right now, so maybe that's another reason why you wanted to take a step back. But girl, fight for your family. If you want to have a baby, do whatever you got to do to have that baby, okay? That's pretty much my review on this episode, you guys. Let me know what you felt. Robin trying to plan this event was a hot mess. She had like two trays of food, and she didn't know who won the event, what was going on. I think Robin just put that whole thing together just to exclude Wendy because it clearly was not planned through. But anywho, you guys let me know what you think and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.